fantasy movies. There are so many good fantasy movies going back so many years. I've enjoyed a ton of them. I think we should talk about that today. I like to be entertained. Hi there! Welcome to Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son sit down and talk about fantasy movies. I'm the son of that equation, Zach. Yeah, fantasy movies today. I'm Jim, the father here, and we are glad to have you with us as we kind of just talk about some of our favorite fantasy movies today and maybe come up with a top 10 list. We'll see if we can agree on something like that. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to let us know by hitting that like button down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we sure hope you will. It warms our hearts and only takes the effort of click on your part. Thank you for considering. We sure appreciate it. So, Zach, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. I need to make a quick disclaimer before uh, the internet thinks I'm dumber than I am. Because... I've just got like a soda with me. I'm not drinking, drinking today, but I have it in a nice little koozie. Keep it cool. And I have to address the koozie. Ooh, because koozie controversy. I live Slap in the United States the of bottom. America. Uh, I know which state is which. And I know that this is not the state of Michigan. What the heck? <laughs> is it humor? Is it yeah. a. Ultimately, Rachel and I have this trip. Uh, we were originally going to be in Michigan. That ended up having to change. So now we're in North Carolina. But I've still been referring to it for like eight months as the Michigan trip. So she got us all koozies that have North Carolina on them. Now, I have to admit, when I looked at Michigan. it, I thought that was South Carolina. So I think it's North Carolina. South Carolina is the, the heart looking thing. Hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. They're kind of similar. They're You're nothing right. South alike. Carolina is a little fatter. Yeah. It, I South Carolina is more like a tri tringle. A tringle? Yeah, a tringle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not helping the stupid allegation. No, right now. no, you're clearly not. <laughs> but well, no, I, I am aware that it is incorrect, but it gives uh, me joy. Uh, there you go. I am drinking something today, but it's just called coffee in my nice little swag mug. And that's half gone already. Uh, we actually had trouble getting on today because there's so many apparently content creators making things right now. The software we use to stream this stuff up to where we then edit it and all was like, come back later. <laughs> like, so this is our time. It just hates it. us, and that's okay too. Hmm. But we persisted. We are here to talk fantasy movies. I like fantasy movies. I do also want to note, we haven't seen every movie that exists. I've seen we a probably lot of them, have though. different tastes than some people. So if you disagree with our list or we don't mention a movie that you love, let us know. Chances are we haven't seen it and we would love to broaden our uh, horizons a little bit. Absolutely. And we, you know, comment box, people, comment box, share your thoughts about fantasy movies. So we're going to stumble along here just talking about some of our favorite or most entertaining or oddest fantasy movies we've come across. And when we get to the end of this discussion, then we'll try to say, OK, out of all these things we came up with, what would be our top 10? It'll be very scientific and objective. Yeah, yeah. not at all. Yeah, no. <laughs> All right, we'll kind of go back and forth. I'm sure we came up with similar things for some of them. Like the first okay. thing that came to mind on my you list was easy the money. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Right, right. There's a lot of easy money with some adaptations, uh, some that are great, some that are less so. But that's kind of one of the kings there, you know? Yeah. Perfect. Peter Jackson's adaptation from 2001 through 2003 we're talking about here. You know, there are other versions of the Lord of the Rings. It was important to clarify. And we're talking about this masterpiece that with the return of the king coming out, you know, swept a whole bunch of Oscars. And yeah, just fantastic movies. Really set the standard. Yeah, we agree. I'm It's going to be somewhere around the top 10. You know, that that's definitely going to be on the top 10 when we get that far. Speaking of big names in fantasy adaptation movies there, we'd be remiss not to mention Harry Potter. While it... I don't think it's as good of movies as The Lord of the Rings, per se. 
they're entertaining. They're good movies. They have a fantastic following and movement. And there's no doubt they are fantasy. Oh, 100%. Yeah, the <laughs> Harry Potter movies, again, set a standard for the way you can bring fantasy novels to the screen. And these, you know, uh, primarily focused as younger fantasy as opposed to the Lord of the Rings, you know, more robust adult style fantasy. The Harry Potter books initially are really written for kids. They're not kid books, you know, as in anything inferior about them. Plenty of adults love the Harry Potter books. But they did they kind of create the YA genre. Yeah, and they so they take this young stuff and they they still bring it up to the screen over 10 years, 2001 to 2011. There's one particular, I mean, there's a lot of actors that appear in the Harry Potter movies. You know, we get used to these few kids who we grow up with on the screen, mm -hmm. right? You know, but they brought in a lot of talent. Correct. That was very impressive that you see in some top quality movies. Absolutely. Going back decades. Uh-huh. Uh, very impressive. But one of the characters that particularly is entertaining to me is a staple of fantasy and sci-fi. Warwick Davis. That is correct. He plays two different roles. In this movie franchise, I believe. Technically, yes. And it's because in the, I think, third movie, his original character didn't appear in the script. And they were like, but you have a deal to be in this movie, or we want you in this movie. And so they That's made how a he different ends one. Up in Gringotts? That's how he got there? No, no, I don't know that he's in Gringotts. Yes. Isn't he one of the no, bankers? I don't think so. Maybe eventually, but Warwick Davis plays Professor Flitwick. Yes. Um, and then in the third movie, Flitwick's not there, so they gave him the role of the choir instructor. Okay, I saw him do that too, but I was sure. Okay, I got to do some quick research. I was pretty sure he is I don't also think that's him. Warwick Davis. It's possible that one of the Gringotts... Yes, Gots he also was? played the Gringotts bank teller in the okay. Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wasn't positive on that one. I was like... <laughs> so he's got three roles. <laughs> we see him around a lot. In, in these various films. And he's going to be mentioned again here today. I, I always enjoy him. Another one I'll toss out here. And, and I, you know, I'm kind of cringing when I mention this one. But a lot of people are going to be like, how did you not talk about this? Mm -hmm. The Hobbit trilogy. We talk about the Lord of the okay. Rings. You know, then 2012 to 2014, Peter Jackson comes out with these three additional bloated movies of The Hobbit. But... They're big time fantasy productions on the screen, no doubt. Are they the best adaptation? Eh. While we're on the topic of things that ooh, are they the best movie? Are they the best adaptations? Uh, some people will think that of some of my next picks. I don't. These are movies that hold great places of nostalgia in a lot of people's hearts and not mine. Okay, so you're feeling they need to be mentioned, but you're probably not going to fight for them to be in the I'll top ten. I'll get yelled at us. if I don't mention them, but I'll still get yelled at when I say I don't really like them. All right, give us one of them: The Neverending Story. What? I do not like this movie. I that think is it is totally boring. high on my list. I think it is boring. It at this point Sebastian! in my life because I'm Sebastian! younger. <laughs> The effects were what they were, da, 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 but I don't think they were necessarily da, 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 even amazing for their time. They just were. So, <laughs> no, anyone who says this is a fantastic staple of fantasy and movie, it's nostalgia talking. It is nothing else. It is a great fantasy story. The movie, you know, I mean, they were working with the special effects of the time. But the, you know, even the, that, the mid-80s. We look at other things from the mid-80s, and it's got better special effects. I think they probably but, had a lower budget. Well, they made some choices on how they did some of the things, and that's some of the charm of this movie. But the story itself, too, is something special. I fell asleep. Well, okay. All right. Yes, send your hate mail to Zach. Now I am me. aware that that is a controversial opinion for me to have. All right, I'm let me to toss it. one out that I think you'll agree with me on. 1987's The Princess Bride. That was one of my next on my list as a good fantasy movie, a good adaptation. It's just a good movie. Had you not agreed, it would have been inconceivable. If I hadn't agreed, I would have been fired from my real life job. <laughs>
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I the Princess Bride is so rewatchable. It's it's just a lot of fun. You know, Grandma Hansen. I sat her down a few mm-hmm. years back to watch the Princess Bride. She'd never watched never it. Seen it. She fell asleep during it. <laughs> I can't really blame Grandma, her. You know, <laughs> like I can blame her for the sake of the Princess Bride. I can't really blame her for the sake of her at that point. <laughs> What's another one you would suggest we talk about? Mm. All right, while we're here. Wait, 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 wait. Before the we, we're we wait, wait, waiting a bit more about the Princess Bride. Okay. I'm okay because talking again, more about the Princess Bride. The cast that they brought together for this movie. Absolutely. I mean, that's part of why it's so good. It's where I totally fell in love with uh, how do you say his name? Great question. El Elwis Hughes. Uh, the, the the star. I'm terrible with names. Don't ask me how to pronounce something. Uh, I've seen him in a lot of other things. Uh, very different characters that he's played in other things. But sure. every time I see him, I just smile. And I'm thinking of the Princess Bride. And as you wish, Billy Crystal has a delightful part in this. Mm-hmm. We've got the, the Swordman, who goes on to do a number of things later as well, uh, including crime procedurals and stuff. I mean, just a lot of these people had big time stardom before it or were launched by it. Mm-hmm. I mean, even Princess Buttercup goes on to play the wife of the president uh, on that Netflix series. House of Cards? Yes, yes. I was She's like, that's a Netflix person. government series. That's her. It's like, oh, wow. Okay, anyways, moving on. I'm not moving on. I'm. You spent time on Princess Bride, so have I. It, this is one that people talk about being like, it holds up. It's so good. You don't need to ever remake this. I agree. However, I think However. there's an opportunity for a sequel at some point that is kind of a remake, which is to say you make the next generation of telling this story to the kid and the story is very similar, but it changes a little here and there of how that would be it's told funny because it's how this other kid is imagining or putting their things into it. That would be funny. <laughs> I think it, there's grounds and room for it. And then there's even room for like every 40, 50 years. You drop a new one. It's just slightly different. <laughs> All um, right. What's the next one you're going to bring up? Next one I'm going to bring up is one that we will both agree to love. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Huh. I didn't put it on the list. It, it just... It's got fantastical elements. It's fantasy, but I I can understand. Anything Arthurian legend, I think, already goes into fantasy. But it's like a spoof of Arthurian legend. Yeah, but like, let's put it this way. Comedy. In baseballs, (laughs) sci-fi. Yes. It's stupid, and it's not hard sci-fi, but it counts. So, So does this. Yeah, we we both definitely fully enjoy Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, so, all right, all right, we'll put it there. We'll see if it comes back around to make the top ten. Another definitely uh, rewatchable movie, as we kind of can quote along throughout oh, absolutely. the movie. Okay, another one I'll toss out here is one I know you will hate. Oh, no. Conan the Barbarian, 1982. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't hate it as much as you think I would. Really? Really? I, I think the original kind of movie... I disparage this kind of... I disparage content. the kind of thing, and I disparage it being overhyped. But the idea of like a singular thing of this genre and a one classic thing, I'm like, that's fine. Okay. And Conan the Barbarian, in its singular form, is good and fine. It's when people try to make that their entire personality around fantasy that is very problematic. Okay, okay. But it definitely represents a an element of the fantasy genre, though. Yeah, and he looks like Conan. <laughs> he could barely speak English at the point where he does this movie. This was Arnold in the heyday. It helped launch, however, his movie career. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, this guy looks good on screen. We might want to try to find some other ways to use this guy. <laughs> Give us another one. Okay. In a similar but I think better vibe. I'm going to bring Highlander into this. Interesting. That that makes sense. I did not think of Highlander, but uh, you're right. We get our, our swords, a little bit of sword and sorcery, but this was just, it's a good, 
80s movie, which is hard for me to say with a straight face, but they exist. Did you happen to catch note the year? Uh, 1986, I have 1986. here. 1986. Oh, it's definitely 80s. <laughs> it's got the 80s feel to it, but it's good. All right, uh, here's another one from me. Let's uh, throw back a bit. 1939, The Wizard of Oz. One of the original big classic fantasy films. I understand and value this film for what it is. It's never been my favorite. It just kind of is. It's not a very faithful adaptation. They no. don't change things. But it was a highly successful film. And for people like me, it was some of the earliest fantasy we were seeing on TV every year. They would show it around Easter every year. And this is before... People had VCRs and were buying movies and stuff. This was the only way you saw this content again. They'd have re-screenings and you could go watch it in the movie theater. It's a beautiful film with all the color that shows up, you know. And it's fantastical. Absolutely. It's catchy tunes. Sure. We're off to see the wizard, you know. Yeah, they get stuck in your head. And there's some pop culture things. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. I mean, everybody's Not a heard dog. This <laughs> All right. Toss another one at us. So I, I did look just briefly of, like, what's the internet got to say? What, what, what are some top lists? What's out there? And sometimes sure. I came across things where I'm like, I don't know if I would have thought of that. It's not how I usually think of fantasy. But it's fantastical. It is fantasy in a different way. And one of these that surprised me, but I, I actually really like this movie, was Big Fish. Yeah, you know, I don't really like Big Fish. So I, I think it's I very hit or it miss with didn't Big put Fish. it on the list. <laughs> People either really like it or really don't. And that's it's, okay. It's one of those you really have to appreciate what they were creating, where they were going when they made this film. It's definitely fantastical. Yeah. On the one hand, I can agree with you and understand what you're saying. On the other hand, I saw it way younger than you did because we watched it together. And I don't know if I appreciated where they were going enough when I did enjoy it. Uh, you got a year? Uh, 2003. There you go. All right. Brings um, us back to you. Yeah, let me uh, bring out one that I just kind of enjoyed, but it bombed. And it's not going to make the top 10. But okay. barely anyone mentions this movie anymore, and therefore I want to mention the movie. Okay. Crawl, 1983. It's a fantasy film. It's an epic adventure. The effects at times are a little rough. But I liked the movie. You know, if you go back and watch it, you'll go, oh, what? Why? So there may be people on this one who are going to comment going, really, Jim, crawl? <laughs> but one thing I will give it a shout out for, it's one of the first, maybe the first film in which we get to meet Liam Neeson. He's just a big character. But he goes on to do so much, some of which is fantasy. First. I love me some Liam Neeson. And young Liam is in this movie. Where are we drawing the line between fantasy and sci-fi in this particular conversation? Because we often blur that line a lot. Are we having a very hard line between the two? Oh, we're trying to, to draw a line. Like, I would not include Star Wars. Okay. Okay. That That's too far into the sci-fi-ish realm, I'd say, for this list. In the same vein, then, we wouldn't include, like, any iteration of Dune. Yeah, leave that over. I think over that in the hits the same vibe as Star Wars does. Yeah, leave it over there in the sci-fi. Okay, okay. Uh, in that case, my next one I will bring one thing that I think we can include is kind of this like monster, monster mash variety kind of uh, vibe. I think that totally fits our fantasy conversation. Um, okay. So I'm bringing Van Helsing. Ooh, which is one of the first movies of this kind that I actually watched on my own. On the TV in your bedroom while you were downstairs with mom doing something. Now that's the Van Helsing with uh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, and, yeah. Which did not do well at all. Oh, it performed the horribly in the box office. And they had it, a whole idea this was going to be a, a series, and yeah, it has its problems here and there. But I loved it. 
it does some really cool things. I think it has some wonderful effects, especially for the fact it's 2004. Yeah, the effects are off the hook. And that I can think of, I like compare, I think the original Fantastic Four was around that time too. And I compare the special effects from the two that movie is by so brain. And I'm like, that's, that is not comparable. <laughs> Do you remember when we went to Universal Studios theme park and they had a Van Helsing little yeah. thing you could walk through? And I mean, it was... Well, and I think there was like a show thing that was kind of still themed around Dracula Castle and Van Helsing thing at the time. They were really they were also pushing, showing like you know, props and things. And... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like that. Van Helsing. Good one. I like that one. Now, along the similar vein, you know, when okay. we're talking about monsters and horror some of the horror is too dark and horror but some is a little more fantastical and so i'm gonna throw in one of my favorite movies of all time young frankenstein 1974 okay and now we're sitting in the vibe where i feel okay with monty python being here (laughs) (laughs) but oh young frankenstein so many laughs i can again i can watch that movie again and again and again it's on the edge of fantasy, but it's fantastical. I'm going for it. Okay. What else you got? The last thing that I think I need to put in that really fits into this like monster category is one that I feel like I need to put in for the sake of everyone out there. Uh, any film bros that might be mad at me or something. I've never seen this movie, and it would not make my list because of it. Yeah, see, I'm only... I think you've seen it. Seen, I but... think you've seen it. I think I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. Nosferatu. Oh, that's not what I was going to say. Hmm. I have seen Nosferatu. Yeah. And to me, it is it is a classic. Yeah, it's like it's 1921 or something. Some of the er- earliest of what it did. Did it very well. It's creepy. Um, I haven't seen it. I don't necessarily plan to see it. You can, but it does you belong can in a lot of lists. On YouTube for free. It does belong days. in exactly. a lot of lists of like great movies, especially of their time. Let's see. I'm going to lean back into a little more fantasy again. Do more it. traditional fantasy with some of these. Although this first one is more of a real world setting, it's still clearly fantasy. It's one of my childhood favorites. The original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, 1971. You know, the Gene Wilder. Gotcha. So we're just on Gene Wilder for you. Young Frankenstein, Willy Wonka. We're getting there. I didn't care for the Johnny Depp remake. It's fine, but I didn't need a remake because I love the classic original. What did you, did you see the remake? I've seen both. Okay. What do you think of the Johnny Depp version? I enjoy it for what it is. It it dives into the whimsy, but misses some of the weight. It also makes the story more about Willy Wonka Mm -hmm. than it does about Charlie, which is really funny. Because they named the original Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, and they made named the next one Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, or something along those lines. Is like, why? What? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I have not seen the newest Wonka prequel thing with Tim Tam Chalaman. I know that's yeah. not his name. Timothy uh, Chalamet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I will get to it eventually. I, it was wasn't something I wanted to see in theaters. Okay. That opening sequence, I mean, it's not the opening sequence of the movie, but in the film, when Willy Wonka with his cane is working his way out and then he gets stuck and then he trips and ta-da! I mean, Gene Wilder would be happy with you mentioning it, considering he said, that is my requirement for being in this movie. (laughs) You will let me do it that, because from that moment on, you don't know if he's lying or telling the truth. Give me another one. I had a better one in my head, and then we started talking about that. So I'm going to have to go with what's in front of me instead. Okay. Um, We're going to go to some of my classic childhood. We're going to bring in the Mummy movies. First one's great. Second one's good. Third one needed help, but it got better effects. (laughs) Um, You're talking about the Brendan Fraser movies. Yeah. Yeah. I love some Brendan Fraser. They're, They're entertaining. Yeah, I wasn't thinking those for fantasy. They're, again, monsters, but the borderline fantasy. All right, they're fantastical. There's they're great adventure magic movies. and resurrection and all these yeah. things. It's there. Okay, here's another one for you. 2005, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. 
that version that came to the screen. Now, I'm not going to include necessarily old, 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 anything old. else that came after, although Prince Caspian is not that bad. But just the way they did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was very well done. We got some great performances from the actors selected for that. And uh, the the setting, the tone, all around. That's a good movie. I got mad at the series when they made Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is my favorite of the books, and they butchered it. Mm -hmm. That just it, that hurts. Yeah, that's why for this one, we're not talking the series. We're just talking about the first movie. And Professor Xavier playing Tumnus. Yeah. <laughs> well, he wasn't Charles yet. Not yet. That was years later. That was not Sir Patrick's story. Uh, no, not that Other one. one. <laughs> Let's add in a little bit of fantastical, weird elements, especially when you include the whole series. But just a different period than we usually think, but definitely fits in some fantasy settings. I'm going to mention the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I have it on my list. Yes, that that's classic. Uh, we've got quite a range of movies, 2003 to 2017. And quite a range of different elements of fantasy. <laughs> this might have been better to just stop after the first movie. Definitely. The first movie was delightful and so entertaining. And, and then, then it would have been better have again. Nah. It would have been better again if they stopped after the trilogy. Yes, yes. But then they kept going. There was more money to be made, and Johnny <laughs> Depp kept bombing in too many other things. So here he needs another pirate movie. <laughs> All right, I'll take that one. Uh, speaking of Johnny Depp, let me throw in another one of his movies Edward Scissorhands. Okay. okay. 1990. It belongs. Uh, it it's does. Better. Him and his scissors. And I think that's the earliest fantasy type thing Johnny Depp did. I did see him back in the 80s in a, in, uh, I think it's the original Nightmare on Elm Nightmare Street. Nightmare on Elm Street. He gets pulled into a bed or something. Ah, it's quite the graphic scene where he goes up and up and you can't say down in flames. He goes up in blood. You know, but <laughs> Edward Scissorhands, though, that's a touching movie. It really has a point, too. <laughs> nope, I'm not but, giving you that one. It is the last film Vincent Price appeared in, and I'm a big Vincent Price fan. Mm. All his classic horror movies and suspense thrillers that he did, and then we get just a touching performance at the beginning of the movie from Vincent Price. He was fantastic. Okay, give me another one. So there's a number of movies that I can't mention based upon what you said of whether or not you've seen it, and some of these I've only seen like a little piece of, and then like stopped watching it. I, I People were showing me the movie and I didn't care for it. So I can't really mention any of the labyrinthine movies. Any movie that has labyrinth in its title, whether it's the full title or part of it, there are a lot of great ones out there that I don't care about. Okay, so we can't, you're saying we can't include Pan's Labyrinth because I neither can't. of us have seen it. Neither of us have seen that one. Okay. But we can include the 1986 Labyrinth because I have seen that. I've only seen part of it. And I stopped watching because it didn't connect with me. I was like, "Dude, it has Muppets in it." <laughs> I don't care about Muppets. It Break was directed the, by Jim Muppet. Henson, the guy who brought the Muppets in the first place to reality. And uh, you know, it's a good movie. I, I like. I, it's got David Bowie in it. You know, so you've got this rock star who's his role in Labyrinth is amazing. Well, I'm sure he did great. And I'm sure it's a great movie. Having a rock star and it doesn't make it a great movie. We already said we're not including Dune, but the original one did have Sting and that didn't make it a good movie. Yeah, but no, Labyrinth is a good movie. The thing he thing he does with the three balls and he can move them around. I'm just, But it was a period piece. That is vintage 80s. Since you mentioned Got Us on the Labyrinth, mm -hmm. I will also mention the movie that came out four years before it that shares some similarities the dark crystal which is another one that i can't talk to they made a revival reboot something show on netflix not that long ago huh, i didn't catch that um and i think this is another one of those places where we again get to talk about War warwick davis i think at least with that? the it's either that or the other thing that they made a show it's the other thing they made a 
show reboot. Yes, of. yes, and that's coming. Yeah, <laughs> we've both got that on the list again. But uh, just uh, back to the Dark Crystal, though, it was also directed by Jim Henson, Muppets, and Frank Oz, who's also a big Muppet guy, right there with him. Frank Oz, of course, goes on to be the hand and voice behind Yoda. Okay. But uh, The Dark Crystal was groundbreaking at its time. Big, major movie featuring puppets. Yeah, and, and just did it and did it well. And it, it's a lot of fun. So I, a good fantasy film, The Dark Crystal. But go ahead and mention that other one with Warwick Davis. That's oh, no, you're, you're going to have to do it because I haven't seen it. I don't. You haven't seen Willow? No, I haven't. Oh, my goodness. 1988. It's it's such a endearing fantasy adventure. And yeah, Warwick Davis is the dwarf hero, the reluctant dwarf hero. The problem that I run into is when someone of especially say your generation says endearing as their big descriptor for a movie from the 70s or 80s. What I hear is you loved this as a kid. I don't think I will. I didn't love Willow. Willow was just okay for me. Sorry. It, but it as doesn't it make me more likely to watch it. People talk about it as they find it, you know, very nostalgic and endearing and great. For me, it was just okay. And I had no interest in trying the the reboot. The I, I didn't even watch it. It's but one of those movies Willow where I there feel and it's on the fantasy radar. I feel comfortable saying this is probably good and people have a right to like it. I probably never need to see it. I have two more. I've got more. We can throw yeah, more. Go ahead. I don't think we have enough dragons on our list yet for something that is a fantasy movie list. Okay. What do you so want? So I'm to do? throwing a series that I will go to bat for <laughs> any day of the week. All right. Even if you aren't a huge animation fan, it's How to Train Your Dragon. These ah. are fantastic movies. There's a whole series? There's three. They made three. Wow. The first yeah. is really good. The you second year for me? is good and gets you. I do not have the year in front of me. I can I'll find look it though later. later on. How to Train Your Dragon trilogy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the third fails? Because you was like the no, first it's... is good, the second gets you. And the, the third th is like a good wrapping conclude it, it gives it shape to a trilogy but it's the least memorable to me okay well you mentioned dragons i'm gonna throw one more on here just it's one of it's a worthy film that's one of the most recent the newer version of dungeons and dragons that came out in 2023 oh, yeah, i'm down I'm it's down an entertaining for that. film it's nicely Classic done fantasy it got some big blockbuster uh, engagement and attention i believe it was commercially successful I think so. Yeah, yeah. So got some good names in it. Oh, it certainly does. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, that's very valid. Give us another one. Well, I'm having the issue of trying to narrow down and be like, mm, which ones have I actually seen, and which ones are ones that I want to see. <laughs> uh, I think I'll I'll throw in this one, and you can take the older or the newer. I think the older holds more love in people's heart. This might be um, interesting. It might be my last film. Clash of the Titans. Oh, no, it's not my last film. I haven't seen... No, I've seen the new one, too. The new one has Liam Neeson in it, doesn't he? As, like, it? Zeus or something, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I don't know that I'd consider either the old or the new as worthy to be a, some I of the I think it's best. worth mentioning. Yeah, the old one, had it was ahead of its time for stop motion capture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, did some cool things there. The, the new the one battle has, scenes with the skeletons. Mm -hmm. Kind of the cool. new one has value for its soundtrack. Oh, okay. That's it. That that's <laughs> all. That's I mean, that's where we get the like more metal version of Sweet Dreams. Okay. So Clash of the Titans, and we're including both versions. I mean, you can include whatever you want. Not making our top ten. All right. <laughs> Well, I referenced my last film that I came up with when I think of the best of fantasy, and I'm going to say it now. The 1964 version of Mary Poppins. Come on. That's some classic fantasy. It's low-tier Disney for me. Oh, low-tier Disney? It's one of their best films ever. How I'm do you sure. Everybody loves it. It's fine. 
it does some cool things with mixing live action with animation, which I think is very cool for it. Yes. I don't connect too much to the story, and the music is just okay. <laughs> I was the weird kid who my favorite Disney movie growing up was The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I understand that's dark a red film. flag. A dark film. <laughs> Dick um, Van Dyke, by the way. Big, big role in Mary Poppins. Delightful character. He set a record recently. I don't know if you caught it. For getting, I think he's the oldest person now to get a daytime Emmy. Hmm. He appeared, he had a guest appearance, I think, on Days of Our Lives. Hmm. And, and he's like now 90. He's old. Like, I, mean, I don't feel bad saying he's old. He he, he is. is old. He he was interviewed for it, and he literally said, "If I'd known I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself." <laughs> yeah, but he's doing pretty good for a guy his age. I'm telling you, wow. I think I off of Mary Poppins and the Disney train of animation and things. I have one last one I want to mention. Okay. Because I think it always deserves more attention than what it gets. But when I mention in circles that people do know it, they're like, yeah, I love that movie. The Black Cauldron. Yeah. I okay. think it's really good. I, I never entirely liked the style of animation that appears in that movie. Mm. But that's just me. It's okay. You can say it's, you just don't like animation. It's definitely fantasy, though. I mean, there you're talking classic... I've read the books Fantasy it's from. Style. Have you? Sure, sure. All right. So we have a pretty lengthy list here now. Um, a lot of things, just not making it. <laughs> we can agree that Lord of the Rings is the top slot of the list, right? We have 27 things on this list now. Yeah, I'm good with the Lord of the Rings being number one. That's easy. I don't think we need to low hanging fruit with that. Oh, wow. And, you know, we can kind of finagle a little back and forth on some of these things. But uh, what about The Princess Bride for number two? It definitely needs to be top five, at least. I'm down for it for number two. I'm 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 good with that. It's good. It's a good movie. And that's the thing. It's not just it's good fantasy or good this or whatever. It's also just a good movie. Yep. And this is where we put it initially, but we can shift things around a bit. How about The Never Ending? St <laughs> no. I'll let that be in the top 10 towards the bottom. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. We got to talk about the Harry Potter series. That's got to be high up Again, here. Top five for sure. Impacted a lot of people. Made some fantasy fans for life. I've, I've moved it up near the top. We'll figure out exactly where eventually. Mm -hmm. hmm, what else? What else rises to the top? It's hard with these movies from the 80s that you don't really know or even appreciate their style, their time. I mean, you can just, like, take some of the things off the list for fine. It was good that we mentioned them, but, like, it doesn't... We put it through the colander and it fell through. It's fine. <laughs> you know, I, I, some things shouldn't be discounted just because they're old. You know, True. we have to appreciate what they added to the genre, what they did, and how much we may still enjoy them. True. What are you targeting when you say that? <clears throat> well, potentially The Wizard of Oz. Which, I think there's plenty of things above it. I'd be okay giving that, like, the number nine or number ten slot. Because you're right, it did do a lot for things. It did a lot for the film industry, even. But we also agree that it's not a good, faithful adaptation. True. And I don't think either of us sit here and say that we enjoy that movie more than plenty others on these lists. Right, right. I, I can agree with that. I think Willy Wonka belongs up there in the top ten. I'm good with that being up there. It's a fun movie. Probably higher than The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, I'm good with that. And just as a representation of the best of fantasy, I want Conan the Barbarian somewhere in the top ten. All right, in that case, I'd put Wizard of Oz 9 and Conan 10. Because I think, yes, it's a fun representation of fantasy. I think that one is objectively not a very good movie. <laughs> it's an entertaining ride, especially if that's what you're looking for. But don't expect great script writing. All right, so uh, we've got a 1 and 2 and a 9 and 10 at this point, And then we've got two things in the middle. 
We yeah. need four more that we might say are top 10 worthy suggestions. I mean, pirates? Or is it too tainted by the failings as it gets I think if we weaker? just say the first movie. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. Is that the first one? I think yeah. The first one. I, th I think that maybe can give us our number eight slot. Okay. I can work with that. At least for our personal slot. Well, that's um, all that matters. <laughs> I'm down with fitting both Young Frankenstein and Monty Python somewhere in here. Mm. You can choose to take one or both of those out, but I think they are good movies that entertain us. And this is our very objectively based list, so it's <laughs> fine. All right, I'm tossing Monty Python up here. And... Young Frankenstein. Because <laughs> we do. We do enjoy these movies. I'm putting Monty Python ahead of Young Frankenstein. Okay. So there's six and seven now. There aren't a lot of movies that I will rewatch. Those two are ones I rewatch. And if you haven't seen either of those somehow, your life is got to avoid a hole you need to fix that like i'm not saying they're everyone's cup of tea you might not connect with the humor but if you're watching this and you like us you're gonna love those movies okay we need one more for just our one top 10 out of everything that we said Oof. wow part of me wants to stick mary poppins up there but no you're not really with it part of me wants to put one of those classic 80s ones like labyrinth or the Dark Crystal. I think I'm okay putting one of those classic 81s that like I haven't necessarily seen, but I know people really love. And that includes like Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, and Willow. All three of those, I'm like, I know people really love them. I know they're great. Whichever one of those three you like the best can go there on our list because I haven't seen a slash won't personally care for them that much like it's hard list. none of these are ones that i really go back and rewatch. but they they represent something in fantasy movies that's classic that's special that advanced the genre willow is the one that's the most traditionally fantasy labyrinth and dark crystal were doing some different sort of things and working with muppets and, and then you got musical elements and I like music. Yeah, yeah. Labyrinth is the one that rises up for me, but Willow is a little more. I, I think more people like Willow more. It's like I here's my argument of why maybe Labyrinth. One of these three things I had heard of before I turned 18 years old. The other two I did not hear about until they made remakes of them. And then I started hearing people that I liked and respected their opinions going, I loved those when I was younger, but I'd never heard of them before that. Okay. Then I'm putting Labyrinth on the list. But on these has had a bigger impact, I think, towards its staying power in the conversation. Okay. Here's what I have for our top 10. And let's see if we can live with this. So from the bottom up number 10 conan the barbarian number nine the wizard of oz number eight pirates of the caribbean curse of the black pearl number seven young frankenstein number six monty python and the holy grail number five labyrinth number four willy wonka and the chocolate factory number three the harry potter series number two the princess bride and number one the lord of the Rings. This might be one of our most cursed, inaccurate lists, but I'm super here for it. I, it works for me. I, I feel good about that top list. But what matters is what do you, oh dear listeners, viewers, and sus subscribers, think of that list. Uh, what would you have put on here that we left off that you think, no, 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 this was the top 10? Or what's on here that you're like, trash? How dare you include such a, a blah, movie? Let us know. Comment box. You know how to use it, people. We love the engagement. But and I'm feeling good with the top 10. Yeah, I won't be offended or hurt by any of your suggestions unless you try to tell me that Aragon belie belongs in the top 10. And uh, at that point, I will <laughs> take personal umbrage.
Okay, okay. That would be the, the one thing too far. Gotcha. That's where we'll leave it then. We're going to do some more recording today. We got to wrap this, baby. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.